Yeah. Shakur, G. Um, Teddy Atlas had a lot of criticism for Shakur on uh, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, I saw a little bit of it. Like, I ain't read all the way into it. I'm not big on, like, reading what's going on with the media, social media, the guy, you know, the gossip. I, I ain't really into it. He, he basically said, you know, he echoed the same sentiment over and over and over again um, that Shakur was boring and mm. he lacked power. Yeah. Do you think that's legitimate criticism? Shakur's response was, you know, he, that he always praises Vasil Lomachenko. Yeah. Do you feel like both um, both Teddy Atlas and Shakur have legitimate um, legitimate claims to what they're saying? Yeah, I feel like this. Uh, Teddy Atlas is, is an older guy who comes from a totally different era. Back then in those times, it was about knocking guys out and beating them up. You know what I mean? Now it's about being smart. So I think when we talk about Teddy Atlas, we can talk about the 70s and the 80s mm -hmm. and the early 90s. Now that we're all the way here in 2022, guys are trying to be smart so they can get to the next check. You know what I mean? So, and at the same time, everybody is not a knockout artist. Everybody isn't a big finisher. So, I mean, it, there's some there's some credible shit there, but then there's some, like, nonsense at the same time. But that's why we, you know what I mean? We are who we are. He's he, he just a man making a, you know, I mean, giving his opinion. That's all. Do you expect to hear this kind of rhetoric coming from a trainer, though? Like, it sounds as if a fan talking to a boxer as opposed to a you know, a trainer of pugilists. Well, if you be real, it, he, he is a, a fan at this point because his last project was uh, Gosdick, and uh, we haven't really heard anything from Teddy Atlas besides that. Also, he has a, um, a, a what you call a podcast platform, so he has to be controversial in order to get hits. You know what I mean? Because nowadays, people don't want to hear about the fight. They want to hear about who you dating. They want to hear about, you know, your mom being sick and shit like that. It's, it's weird now. So, you know what I mean? Like I said, there's points there, and then there's nonsense. Shakur's like a knockout. Do you think that comes from him being a bigger man that's melting himself now? Could we possibly see a more powerful Shakur at lightweight? I mean, that's definitely possible <coughs> when you're talking about the science of uh, the body. But at the same time, again, he's a careful fighter. His, his style is based on being in the right place at the right time, landing the right punches. So it's, it's I mean, I'm not looking for him to knock nobody out. I'm looking for him to be sharp. Cause that's what I know him to be. So anything else is extra. If he do get a knockout, it's extra. You know what I mean? It's a bonus. Does he have enough power to get his respect at 135? I believe so because it's the punches you don't see. And that's what he does. He, he hits you with shots you don't see or you that you miscalculate because of his distance. So I think he'll do great at 35. It's a, it's a couple times I felt like he hurt Konsekiao. Yeah. And I feel like you, we might give Kiseki out more credit. He's a gold medalist. He knows how to survive. Yeah. And he, I felt like he survived in there. Yeah. As opposed to, there's some things this Shakur could have did, but as opposed to completely knocking Shakur's performance, I really didn't agree with that. So that's, all right, you just said the key word, survive. So if, if I'm focused on beating you up and you're mainly focused on surviving, most of the time it's going to be hard to knock you out because you focus on surviving. When you see guys trade shots with guys and get caught and get knocked out, it's because they was trying to trade with the other fighter and they end up getting caught. So if I'm focusing on surviving, you know what I mean? I'm going to run, I'm going to wrap you up, I'm going to push you. You know what I mean? I'm going to do whatever I got to do to not get knocked out. You know what I mean? So that was the key word, survive. He's trying to survive in there. So when the guy's focusing on that, you're not going to just let you knock him out, especially, especially when he's in world-class shape. Should, should Shakur come under fire for his response or should Teddy come under fire for his observation? I mean, Teddy should be Teddy and Shakur should be should be Shakur. With, without Teddy, you don't have guys like Shakur. Without guys like Shakur, you don't have Teddy. The reason being, this is just why we talking about it. Here's another man talking about his opinion and then you got another man who just got to keep going in there and proving himself. When you, when you have two guys like that, Teddy's actually good for Shakur because he's going to make him up his game. Not because he said it, but but because Shakur might have said, you know what, I did my thing. And then you got another guy like, no, nah, but you could have did more. You could have did better. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, all right, I got you. I'm, I'm The next guy going to pay for that. You know what I mean? So you need these type of relationships in anything you do. You need the negative and the positive. Even though what he said is not negative because he's just being a critic. That's just what critics are. Can Teddy be guilty of picking and choosing? 
Yeah, he could, because a lot of people are. You got a lot of Earl Spence fans out here who don't know shit, but they love Earl Spence just because what he do. You got a lot of Terrence Crawford's fans out here that love him, don't know shit about what he doing, but they love what he do. And he just talking. That's just how it goes.